the EWR ICK Bartholomew errors. Uh, this is Patrick. Uh, the facts are not in dispute, particularly as tendered by Dr. Smith, uh, Dr. Dusky, and Mr. Wabinski. Wabinski. Um, let me share with you the truth. I was at Las Casas on the first day of school at the request of uh, the former board president, Michael Scott. I was also a Montefiore Crane Rudolph. And the reason that he wanted me to go there was because of some of the unique challenges that that school faces. Uh, but let me talk about the truth of the matter. And that is that the children who attend that school pursuant to state and federal law are entitled to free and appropriate public education. What I mean by that is that students with learning disabilities are entitled to public option pursuant to the Illinois School Code, as well as ESEA, the Elementary and Secondary School Act, which governs all schools in the United States of America, K through 12. Uh, specifically, the issue as it relates to no child left behind and a parent's right of choice. You're the attorney who figured that one out. But the fact of the matter is, is that parents have the right to choose. And Las Casas is the only school, public school, in the city of Chicago, District 299, that offers and affords parents the right to educate their child in a public school. Now, again, the truth of the matter is, and let me just describe the student population here, 70% of the students who attend Las Casas come from the Nancy B. Jefferson uh, Juvenile Detention Center. The other 20% come from the Cook County Jail because they're 70 years or older. The remainder come from places like Hargrove Middle Hospital. They have ED, emotional disabilities. They have BD, behavioral disabilities, primary. The learning disabilities are secondary. These children are on the fast track for schoolhouse to jailhouse pipeline. If they are not together, because uh, my experience here on the first day was almost like being in a mental hospital. There is a learning disability. I, I hear you. Uh, I'm Ms. Uh, Fitzpatrick. I just ask that you uh, endure with me here because uh, they're, they're not parents here. And the reason that they're not parents here is because the parents don't really understand the magnitude of this. As I said, the children have ED and BD. That means that the parents have ED and BD issues. You know, it's genetic. And so, unless people advocate for these children in a meaningful way, they are lost. And as I assure you, they are on the fast track from the schoolhouse to the jailhouse. Now, the other issue, and I would offer a suggestion to the board, specifically Mr. Butts, I'd ask that you consider this. We need to look at a hybrid model. These children need to stay together, Dr. Smith. They do not need to be dispersed throughout this system. This is, a very, this is a very special uh, population. These children, for the most part, all have criminal records. So the moment they act out, they are going to be pushed out or they're going to be kicked out of the school. Finally, I'll just say this, again, to Mr. Bucks and to the CEO's office, you know, the issue of liability and exercising a duty of care uh, individually and in your official capacity I dare say when these children are integrated into these various settings, there are going to be liabilities, there are going to be casualties. And so I raise the issue, who is going to be liable individually and in your official capacity? Thank you. Again, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Ms. Fitzpatrick, your law firm? I'm a sole practitioner. David Chestnut, 